Hey, what is good, Ninja? OG over here from Player and welcome to another PE Nintendo Switch and Gaming News video. Today, we've got some awesome topics for you guys. Like always, so let's go ahead and get right into it. So, Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle Producer discusses the lack of an arcade version of the game in addition to the DLC pricing, which has caused quite a bit of uproar when it comes to the community out there. A lot of people aren't liking the fact that half of the characters in the game are locked behind DLC. But the producer does try to defend this when he talks about it. So let's go ahead and get into this article here. And shout outs to Gumatsu for it. So the latest issue of Dengeki PlayStation has an interview with Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle producer Toshimishi Mori, who discusses the game's reasons for being a home console and PC title versus an arcade title, as well as the price of its 20 downloadable content characters. So here are the notable bits of information. So if there is support for it, they would like to continue the series of Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle. Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle is a home console and PC game as opposed to an arcade game mainly because they wanted to get rid of any situation where there would be a gap in ability between the overseas and Japanese players. In other words, Japanese players would get it in the arcades first, giving them more time to practice. And we've seen this with games like Guilty Gear and stuff like that, where the Japanese players just destroy the Western players because they have it in the arcades and other stuff like that, Tekken. So let's go ahead and move on here. So the game is being made under the premise of playing with a gamepad by releasing the main game at a lower cost of 5,800 yen for the physical version slash 5,370 yen for the digital version. As many people as possible will be able to play and those that find it interesting can purchase the downloadable content. It is being set up so that even if you purchase all the downloadable content, it is being set up so that even if you purchase all the downloadable content, the price will not far exceed what a full game would normally cost. So Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle is due out for the PS4, Nintendo Switch, and PC on May 31st in Japan and Asia and June 5th in North America. So basically what he's trying to say here, which I kind of buy and I kind of don't. So let's go ahead and get into the good things here. So yes, it is a cheaper price game. It's more like $49.99, $50, something like that. But they haven't given us all the prices on the DLC. So it seems like maybe the price of the DLC is going to be like 20 bucks. So it's going to be like a $70 game for everything or like $70 for everything. So basically it could be some could look at it as like it's $59.99 and then to get all the DLC characters, it's like $10 more than that. But I think where a lot of gamers are upset or where they're like, what, like what's going on here is the fact that there's so many characters that are DLC and that it's going to be to where you have to make an extra purchase. It's more in line with principle, even if it does fall in line to what if they just said, okay, we're going to give you the base game here and it's $59.99 and then there's just going to be DLC characters that were announced later. I think gamers would be a lot more um, okay with that. It's the fact that they know beforehand. I mean, we've seen this before with various other publishers. We've seen publishers get crap for letting you know that there's going to be day one DLC and then other publishers who do the same thing, but they don't do day one. It's already there. The DLC, you know it's coming, but then they release it like a week later or like two weeks later. The gamers are like, okay, well, it's after the game launched. So a lot of times, like it's more on the principal line of things and gamers don't put two and two together. Day one DLC is something that can happen pretty much with every single game. A lot of these games already have day one DLC ready to go, but they don't just release it on day one because they're afraid of the backlash from gamers. So they wait a couple weeks or they wait a month or whatever the case is, and then they release it. Heck, we saw those with Resident Evil 7. No day one DLC, but a week later there's DLC for the game. And gamers were like, oh, well, well, it's not day one, so it's not a problem. So <laughs> even though it's like the same thing as like day one DLC because the DLC is already ready, they're just holding it back, you know, so... Um, I do feel with this whole situation, it just depends on what the pricing is going to be final. Um, I don't necessarily like the fact that they did that. And I think going forward in the future, just so you can avoid the backlash, the publishers and all that, just hold on to that information. Just be like, okay, here's the baseline game. We're probably going to do some DLC characters. 
and then just let us know about the DLC stuff down the line. Like, because look at what's happening now, you know? Look at what's happening now because of the whole 20 characters DLC. Like, when you let everyone know about that, this is the type of backlash you're gonna get. Heck, even if it is gonna be somewhat the same price, people feel that that should have already been in the game then, therefore you created an issue. So, I would just say for them in the future, just make sure you do it a little bit differently. Like I said, I'm not completely down with all 20 characters in terms of DLC, you know, being added on later. However, but if it's the price of like what a normal game would be, so like a $60 game, and if it has that amount of content in there with its modes and everything, and then it's like the DLC is like $10 more, whatever the case is, however much they're gonna charge for it, if it's around the price what you usually pay for a game and the DLC characters, then I'd be fine with it. Um, but we have to still wait and see what the pricing is gonna be. If there's gonna be any type of season passes, things like that. And what the American pricing as far as US dollars is gonna be, is this gonna be like a $29.99 game? Is it gonna be, you know, like a $39.99 game? I know they already have the yen translation, but sometimes it doesn't always convert out completely or they make differences based on the market in terms of popularity and things so you never know what it's going to be in the final say when it comes to the western markets and then you also have the european market as well so there's a lot of different stuff to talk about here when it comes to blaze blue cross tag battle but we'll see how it turns out in the end so what do you guys think about what the producer had to say here let me know your thoughts in the comment section below all right and moving into the next article here the media create sales charts for january 15th 2018 through january 21st 2018 are here mario plus rabbits kingdom battle had a good debut when it comes to the retail charts and also the download cards we've got numbers from famitsu in addition to the media create so shout outs to gumatsu for the article and mario plus rabbits kingdom battle finally launched in japan this past week to 66,692 opening week sales the latest media create sales figures have revealed gintama rumble also launched for the playstation 4 and ps vita the PlayStation 4 version sold 38,443 copies, and the PS Vita version sold 23,417 copies, totaling 61,860 copies opening week sales. Also new this week was Street Fighter V Arcade Edition for the PlayStation 4, which launched at 7,908 sales, and the budget-priced re-release of Valkyria Chronicles Remastered for the PlayStation 4 launched at 3,346 sales. Other new titles that did not make the top 20 this week included PlayStation 4 version of Deathmark and Imperial Fantasy on the Dark for the PS Vita. This would mean that both titles sold less than 3,081 copies. For Deathmark, this is much lower than the sales of the PS Vita version, which launched in June 2017 to 7,099 sales. A Nintendo Switch version is also planned for release this spring, so we'll see how that one does. On the hardware front, the PlayStation 4 was also the top system sold with 52,507 sales after outselling the Nintendo Switch. Last week, the Nintendo Switch sold 43,027 units and the Nintendo 3DS family sold 12,000 15 units so overall pretty slow week for both of the systems i mean not necessarily slow because it's post holiday but not bad at all especially when you consider what the wii u was doing after post holiday i've seen some on twitter talk about there being some switch shortages while other people say no you can find them so i think it's really based on the location and nintendo probably really loaded up the holiday season and might be seeing some shortages here and there but overall it's not really too big of a deal at this point and they're still selling 40 something thousand plus every single week playstation 4 is doing really well selling 40 50 thousand plus um since the post holiday and they also have monster hunter world coming up so that's going to really help out with things so it's going to be interesting to see how much the reach has on that just because the holiday season i thought more people would have purchased into the playstation 4 because of monster hunter world and the beta and like the playstation 4 console and all that but i think that once the game releases we'll probably see a lot more people kind of jump in and see how that goes plus there's dragon ball fighter z in addition to that coming up in february so we should see some good sales across the board when it comes to nintendo switch we do have a few games coming up pretty soon here um in japan i know hyrule warriors is coming out march for them so that's not too far away from here dragon quest builders is also coming out pretty soon as well so that should help out i think people are going to want to play that style of game on the nintendo switch so overall pretty good and also japanese nintendo is reporting that famitsu actually has mario plus rabbits kingdom battle a little bit higher because they do include download cards and not just the retail chain like media create so according to famitsu they have mario plus rabbits kingdom battle at 86,596 units sold for the week and once again that number does include download cards sold in stores so some people just want to be able to play it digitally and they did that now that does not include the digital sales 
from Nintendo gets from their eShop, like the actual people that go on there and buy it digitally from the store, not going to the store and buying the download cards first. So it does not include that. So honestly speaking here, Mario Plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle could have had an opening week of 100,000 units when you include maybe another 15, 16,000 for digital purchases through the eShop. We'll see where it ranks on the eShop sales charts in Japan. But yeah, that's definitely good to see, especially for a Western game right there. But having the Mario RP, Rabbids isn't necessarily hugely popular in Japan. So it's good to see the game do well. And I'm pretty sure with these sales here, on top of what they've already done in the Americas and Europe, it might be getting close to a million unit seller if it's not already there. So awesome stuff to see for Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle in Japan. What do you guys think about all the sales charts here? Nothing really too exciting for this week. There's a ton of Nintendo switch games on here pretty much the same games that we always see there's one two switch pokemon tournament you have xenoblade chronicles 2 hanging in at number 20 there then splatoon mario kart 8 legend of zelda same games they're like always so what do you guys think about all the sales charts here let me know your thoughts in the comment section below all right and moving into the final article here it looks like the 2k team is finally getting ready a nintendo switch patch for wwe 2k18 on top of that, we are getting a PS4, Xbox One, and PC patch as well because despite the Nintendo Switch version running pretty bad and having some issues, there are issues across all the versions of the game. So according to the 2K forums, they had this to say about the upcoming patch, and this is patch 1.07. The low WWE Universe patch 1.07 will be releasing today at 4 p.m. PST on Xbox One, PS4, and PC. They also made an edit saying that the third Nintendo Switch patch will be releasing on Thursday, January 25th. So not today, but tomorrow. And here are some of the issues that they fixed on PS4, Xbox One, and PC. Fixed an issue that prevented users from deleting CAS tied to deleted universes. Fixed an issue that caused PPV stars to be lost when losing internet connection. Fixed an issue resulting in barricade piece appearing in the middle of the ring and create a video. There are also various other general bug fixes throughout the game. And then on the Nintendo Switch, it says this patch will be to catch up the Nintendo Switch with the patches that have released on PS4 and Xbox One. So hopefully it's fixing all of the issues that this game has on the Nintendo Switch. I haven't played the game, but I've watched other people play and said that there's been some issues in terms of the bugs and just how it works and just a bunch of other things. And yeah, I mean, obviously it's been a little bit rough for them across all platforms here, but I'm not a big WWE fan anymore when it comes to the video games. So I don't really pay attention or keep up with all the stuff that's going on, but apparently they're releasing some patches that are slowly fixing things. And hopefully this patch is, they said that it's gonna keep it in line with the other versions of the game. Hopefully this one is the one that really improves the quality of it so more people can buy into the Nintendo Switch version. So what do you guys think about these patch notes here? Did you buy WWE 2K18 on the Nintendo Switch? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. All right, Ninja, that wraps it up for this video here. Go ahead and check out the links in the description below. We've got Facebook. We've got Twitter. Go ahead and give us a like and a follow on our social media. Really helps us spread the content of player assets across the interwebs in addition to YouTube. Also, make sure you check out our Patreon and YouTube live gaming page to consider supporting Player Essence. When you do so, it gets you access to all sorts of cool benefits, perks, rewards, and emotes via YouTube sponsorship. So check out the link in the description below and consider supporting Player Essence right here on YouTube. Hit that like button if you did like this video. Let's me know you guys want more content like this going forward in the future. And subscribe to Player Essence for the latest RPG, Japanese, and Nintendo gaming news. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.